How's it going, everybody? I have a lot of favorite things from 2021. You can see my live stream that I go into some detail. My favorite things, though, like this Powerfilm Solar Lightsaber Max, not Lightsaber, Lightsaber Max, is uh, definitely one of my favorites of the year. And we're going to talk about it. This is mainly for portable ham radio operation, particularly for you QRP guys. If you have a 705, this is going to be probably a winner. Let's check it out. My first interest in HF ham radio was portable operations, particularly summits on the air. My first right out of the gate, I went out there totally unprepared, failed miserably, but from that point, I was pretty much hooked on HF. I started, as the years have gone by, started looking at the items in my kit and thinking about how I can reduce them down to like this kind of size. And that's where this fits in. If you have a solar panel and a battery you're bringing into the field for portable operations, and again, particularly QRP, and we'll talk about why, uh, this might be the solution for you. This is a solar panel and battery connected together in one portable thing, and it is fantastic. I will note right here in the beginning of the video, this was uh, sent to me to take a look at from Gigaparts. Gigaparts is selling these and there's a link in the description that will take you to my product listings on Gigaparts. There's a discount associated with a lot of the stuff you'll see there. So anyway, check out Gigaparts for getting Powerfilm solar equipment. It's one option you have. Note that uh, I already own this unit, so um, it was just an extra one for me to play around with and test the input from the other panel, which does work. So keep that in mind. I totally bought this in 2021 and have used it many, many times. I really, really like it. But thanks to Gigaparts anyway for sending me another one to check out in comparison. But yeah. it weighs in at about 1.5 pounds. I've found that I can run this in a water bottle pocket on the side of my backpack with my antenna mast and sometimes I'll throw a you know one of my orange gear ties around it slide it right in there and you know tether it to the bag or whatever and it, it stays pretty well I've traveled with this I take this with me oftentimes on travel because I've found also this is a fantastic daddy item and, and what are daddy items I talk about this on my channel a lot these are dual functioning items items that work for you and ham radio but also can work in a pinch to help out your family this is still a USB charge brick basically so you can charge your devices with this without any issue. In its rolled up configuration, it's 13 by five inches on the long side and 2.5 inches at the width here. Unrolled, still 13.5, but when extended all the way, it is 34.5 inches long. Note that this little nylon flap actually protects the panel and it, it's a bit of the extension, but it's not actually part of the panel. So you can fold that under or you can use it to tether to a bag and whatnot and hang it off of something. There's all kinds of different options that this uh, can, can work with. And these little bungee cords that are on the side that, that wrap the panel closed can be used for all kinds of different things. And, and these look like they're just hair ties. So if these ever go wonky on you from use, you can swap them out pretty easy. Now the way this works is the end caps are basically your IO. You got your inside and your outside. So you flip open these little plastic lids and well, this is the outside, I got that wrong. The outside, let's start here then. The outside has two USB-A uh, ports for charging devices and one 12 volt coaxial type connector. So the barrel connector with the outer negative and the center ring positive or center pin positive. And you would use this for like your ICOM 705, for instance, is what I do. On the other end, just ply it off. You've got your actual display screen that shows you the battery charge. You have a USB-C type input, which is what I generally use to charge this. So you can charge this off of a computer or uh, if you're a Mac person or a Windows person too, or a PC person, a lot of laptop chargers now have USB-C and this will generally take a charge from that. The input 12 volts is a smaller diameter, uh, again, coaxial pin, so shield and pin in the center. This one is a little bit, um, 
more, not proprietary, but you're gonna have to source that specifically. And if you do source that, these can work in conjunction with each other or larger panels can be used to input into this and then charge the internal battery. So if this for some reason isn't able to keep up with what you're trying to do, you could always just plug another solar panel into it and be ready to go. Let's put some of these claims to the test. I've got a watt, a watt meter and power analyzer and a USB tester for a power output. So I'm gonna take the output lead, that's the input on the panel here. So here we go, this is the USB connector. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do USB first. So USB A, we'll plug that in. All right, so we're seeing 5.17 volts. And if I take my, my GPD Pocket 2 here, all right, and into the USB-C, all right, so it's drawing 1.5 amps right now, 1.8. So we got a red light output there. Interestingly, this is supposed to kick off, like it's supposed to charge off a 2.5. So I'm wondering if, um, because it's not on, it's not drawing more. But 1.5, let me turn this on and see if that changes anything. And yeah, there you go, it's, it's on now and it's showing that it is plugged in and charging, plugged in currently. So it's, pulling 1.83, which uh, this is supposed to pull 2.5. So this is actually kind of a pain to charge this unit, but uh, 1.83 amps, pretty good. Just so I'm being as thorough as possible, let's uh, plug in this tablet. This thing's like totally dead and it's pulling 0.43 amps. Something I've started carrying in my, in my bag is this power lead that is again, that um, double-ended power lead, that coaxial power lead to an Anderson's plug. So I'll generally go into the 12 volt output. I'll connect it to the stock connector for my, um, my 705. This is the stock 705. In this case though, we're gonna go to a battery tester, a power tester, showing 12.5 volts available. Okay, now plugged into my 705, I'll hit it with uh, some FM into a dummy load, 1.41 amps. I almost forgot, there's somewhat of a battery arms to this uh, charge charger here. So this is with the unit on, which you can see here. And there is a little red button on the back. I'll, I'll hold it down and you can watch it turn off. Now, if I just click it once, single click, the light will turn on. On the other end, this is the input side. If you single press, that will illuminate the battery indicator. This is fully charged, that's why it's into the green here. And if you hold it down, it'll turn it off. And so I've got the LEDs turned on here, right? Here's the LED. This is the output side. This is where the flashlight is. And if I double click the, uh, the button on the bottom, the other end, the input, the light turns on. So that's the high setting. There's the low and that's it off. So it does have a flashlight too. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you about that. And it's, you know, it's fine. It's better than any battery bank or Baofeng that you've got on the market. That's the high, which is, you know, that's, somewhat reasonable there's the low and there's off so there you go and if you want to turn it all off say you've got the flashlight on and you're also charging or you know whatever you can just hold down the little red button on the other end and it'll all shut off and that shuts off the charging too keep in mind that this will be in standby mode for 90 minutes and then it will just turn itself off and if you wanted to you could leave the end cap on let's turn the leds on again so they're green and then bring on the light and now you've got kind of a diffused lamp effect <laughs> it's not great, but somebody would probably ask in the comments if I didn't do this. Hold it down and it's off. In the box, there are a number of goodies that come with it. A double-ended USB-C cable. Sorry, I take that back. USB-A to USB-C and they've got ferrites on both ends. You've got a output for a 12 volt cigarette, you know, car adapter there. And then you have the reverse side the input, the, the input for the panel with a 12 volt auto adapter. So you could charge this off your car and this all comes in the kit. So you're good to go uh, if you wanna keep car portable. Now the unit as advertised on the PowerFilm Solar website will take eight to 10 hours of full sunlight to charge. So this is, depending on how you look at it, this is good for you guys that are gonna do a pod activation when you're gonna stay a while and possibly into the evening a bit. 
It will charge the battery while also charging your equipment, but just keep in mind that if you're running your 705 and maybe a laptop or a tablet off of this while charging, uh, this battery is going to charge a bit slower. It's really just a question of what you think you're going to be doing with your day. This is probably not your weekend solution in all cases, although I have definitely used this over a course of a weekend, but I wasn't playing with my radios all day long. The battery in this is advertised at 18,000 milliamp hours and at five volts output, which is what the USB ports are gonna put out, it's gonna last you a long time. Conversely though, at the 12 volt output, you're going to get less mileage out of it. For instance, I will run my 705 plugged into this for the 12 volt output so that I can get the 10 watt output of my 705. That's going to put a larger load on the battery, particularly because this has an, a max output of five amps on peak draw, it's going to sustain it a little bit less than that. So for the 705, it'll run the full 10 watts output, no problem when you're using this. And you can use this just rolled up. I'll plug this into the 705 rolled up and it'll get the 10 watt output on the 705. But the very, very nice feature of this and why this is probably my favorite thing, one of my favorite things of 2021, as far as rigidity goes, it's still a foldable solar panel, so you need to treat it, you know, well. But I've had my dog run over it accidentally two times, and it showed no damage to the panel, even though her nails kind of did, she was running and she, she ran across it. it. It did not scratch the panel at all, so it is dog resistant. I, I wouldn't put that down as, a, as some kind of... A, test on the hardness scale, <laughs> dog's nails, but it, it seems to be good enough in most situations that you won't have much of a problem and this, this wrapping on it obviously protects it. It's designed to go outside and, and go with you and be rigid and rugged, so I would give it extra points for that. The only other downside is its price. To co-locate battery and panel and be in this nicely designed situation, it's expensive. This is $400. Powerfilm Solar makes high quality panels on the market, definitely good enough for ham radio operation. I mean, they're, they're, they're used by the military, so anyway. But the price for some hams may be out of their ballpark. I understand that, I appreciate that. For some of you, this is the solution you might have been looking for. For others, maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's too high speed load drag, and that's fine. There are other options on the market, cheaper panels. They're gonna be bulkier, and battery solutions that will likely also be bulkier as, you know, this was designed, this was married in a perfect relationship of panel and battery together as one, which I think is, the selling point for this. I think this is why some people should consider it. But if it's outside your budget, I understand things like that happen, particularly with ham radio stuff. We like to go cheap or hand make it ourselves if we can. However, form fit solutions like this are pretty awesome and I definitely like this one. So anyway, one of my favorite things, my top two favorite things from 2021, the Powerfilm Solar Power Saver Max killer killer item anyway thanks so much for watching guys i really do appreciate it if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe if you found this video helpful give me the thumbs up i live stream every saturday at 5 p.m pacific standard time and every other wednesday as i'm now hosting ham nation all right until i talk to you again 73